All right, hello everybody. Welcome to uh, the July Mentorship Programme uh, with myself, Gavin Holmes. Delighted to be with you. I'm the author of, many of you know this anyway, but Trading in the Shadow of the Smart Money and the Complete Volume Spread Analysis System Explained. Uh, today we're going to talk about a trading plan, but that's just partially what's going on because we've got to look at charts as well. And this chart is a, is a fascinating chart. Um, I've, I've got most of my stops to where I want them to be, but I want to look at this yen chart, all right? Because this is like, it's like the elephant, the gorilla, whatever you want to call it in the room, I don't really care. That is a trap up move. Now that is an intervention by a major bank. Now it could be the Bank of Japan, we, I don't care, but it, it, it forms a sequence that, that I've talked about in my book. Now what I'm going to do right here before we get going is show you how you manage a trade. So it's an hourly chart. I'm going to just click on this and I'm using the active trades platform and I'm going to move it just there. OK, now I can't lose any money on that unless the spread changes on me. And I've done that with the other charts. Now, if you look at the, the euro right, in in Smart Center Pro, everything was green when I took the trade. Everything I call it, I, I, I affectionately call it the garden is green. Right, which means I want to be long. If it's blood red, if everything's turned red, I want to be short. I hope that makes sense. But here it's blood red. Oh, oh sorry, the euro is green and, and you can see it. But in um, other instruments, it was negative. So you can see I've got a sell and two buys. If the garden is green, the market will go up. Now, when we see that, we'll go to the euro. The garden's green, okay, but we, we, we go and look at here and we look at what's going on. This is a shakeout, okay, this is a very common principle. It's where the market's marked down and then marked back up and marked back down just below it. All the traders that use stochastics and MACDs go short. Trade guider says, no, they're testing the markets going up. It's going up. Have the belief and the confidence in the system because the trading plan I'm about to explain to you shows this. I've been doing this for 24 years. I've traveled the world. I've been to multiple seminars, trading live. The one thing I want to teach you this week is to believe in yourself. Believe in this. Because it's been around for years. I mean, I'm literally sitting in my trading office in the New Forest National Park, which is in the south of England, for those of you that don't know it looking out on a beautiful new forest where it's absolutely tipping with rain. <laughs> so it's, I'd love to be doing this on a sunny day, but it's not. But I'm very confident that my analysis is correct on all of these charts. And when you trade live in front of an audience, which I've been doing for years, you have to have confidence. If not, you might. It's a bit like playing tennis. You know, um, I watched the Wimbledon final with Alcarez um and and, and he, he's a young man 21 years old but he oozes the confidence and in trading you've got to have that you've got to have the confidence and the belief and you've got to have a plan now novak djokovic who was beaten has won something like 37 majors something ridiculous but he talked to the counter we talked to the interviewer afterwards he said, well, I have a team of people behind me that create a plan. So I've got nutritionists. I've got um, physicians that look after, you know, monitor my blood pressure and all that. I said, well, that's what makes a champion. You want to be a champion in this game. You've got to have the right educational process, which you'll hear. You've invested your money and your time. And you've got to believe in the system. Now, I've given a copy of Master the Markets out to many people, it's, it's exploded on our website. Like our website's gone nuts because people have downloaded and read some of the things that we're gonna cover this week. So if I talk about the trading plan, which I'm gonna start with, this was written before I wrote my book. And I've adjusted it over the years when I sat with Tom before he passed away we made some some changes which were very positive they weren't you know it was all about 
if you're going to do this, Gavin, you've got to do. He called me Gab, actually. So I've got to get that bit right. He, he never called me Gavin. It's Gab. But what he would do, uh, and remember, he was nearly 87 at the time, and we were sitting together, and he couldn't see the screen properly because he had um, macular de degeneration, so he could, his eyesight wasn't particularly good. But what we would do is he'd let me look at the chart and analyze each bar. And then he'd tell me what the market's likely to do, likely. He didn't say it's definite. He never said that. And that's a very important point because everyone wants a definite outcome. But life doesn't deal us those cards. If it did, everyone in the market would be making money. If it did, Donald Trump's ear wouldn't have been pierced by a bullet because he turned his head. But it, it's not definite. It's full of risk. And I want to make sure that as we go through this journey over this week, we all understand the nature of risk. I'm going to talk about it a bit more tomorrow, but you, you must understand, you know, I'm an ex-policeman. Most of you know that I've been in some high risk situations. Um, I was in the London terrorist attack, for instance, I was very much in it and I won't say much more about it, but it was my family and my, myself in a hotel room with terrorists just outside and inside the hotel. We've got rescued by the SAS. Now, the story of that means I know that life is precious and there is risk in trading. However, it's exactly the same, but you don't lose your life. You lose your money. And what we don't want at Trade Guider is any of our customers to be losers. Now, it, does that mean that every single Trade Guider user is a winner? It doesn't, unfortunately. But there are many people that we've taught who've come up to me at shows or exhibitions or wherever we've been. And they've showed me their account statements and said, look, it changed my life. And that is exactly what we want to do. You're not you've got to follow some rules. And that is very, very important. You you if you if you get on a well, one of the guys that I'm teaching is a pilot. Well, I'm teaching two pilots, actually. And he works for American Airlines. And he talks about his checklist which is what I'm going to give you a checklist because it's very easy to sit at a screen for four hours and get bored and say, I'm not making any money because you haven't pressed the button. It's much easier to go for five minutes and go, I think that's a trade, press the button and then lose money. I will definitely stop that for you because this is not just a trading plan, it's more of a life plan. And it's definitely, I'm 57 years old. And this plan means you have to have belief, even when everything's going against you and things so are tough. There we go. Now, Euro USD, see this? I was waiting for that. There it is. Okay testing it they're testing on the one minute and they're testing because they've shaken it out this works but we wait all my stops are in place i don't need to do anything i know exactly where i'm at and i'm managing trades this is what i'll teach you you don't just take the trade once you're in it you have to manage it you can't just well there are some trades i've taken where they're long term trades, talking weeks, maybe months in certain stocks. That's definite. And you, you, you don't want to be up at the middle of the night looking at the chart going, I think Amazon's going down. I think that you can't do that. The market's a snake. It's a snake and it does this. And this is what I'm going to teach you. The markets will do that. They'll do that. They'll go up. They'll go down. They'll go right up and then they'll crash. Just like a snake, if you let it out of a, if you caught a snake, if I don't think any, I, I've never done it, but I know Steve Irwin did when I used to watch him on Discovery. A snake, when you let it out the bag, doesn't just bolt vertically, doesn't just take off, it goes sideways. Markets do that all the time. So, with that being said, I think we've got everyone, yeah, we're not completely full, so that's good. Um, 
The thing to learn about this is you're dealing with risk, which very few traders want to talk about. They go, oh, no, no, you, you, if you buy my software, you, you're going to make millions in you know weeks and stuff. I've seen all of this on TV, on YouTube, all of this. It's complete rubbish. I'm going to read you a statement tomorrow from Tom Williams when he was, in fact, one of his customers who won the World Cup Trading Championship, live money, real money, he made 48% in a year trading Forex. And when he rang Tom to buy the software, Tom said, well, trading is very difficult, you know. It was £5,000, the software at that time. We're talking years ago, well before I was involved. Five grand. But Tom was very reluctant to sell the software to someone he thought was going to lose. And that was the man that he was. But when he was persuaded, he supported people. And that's how I learned. And I dedicate this mentorship course to him, actually, because ultimately, without his ideas and his creativity and also a guy called Bob Harwood, who, who's um, got rest his soul, passed away as well. He was the programmer that started it all. Everything moves in nature forward. You, 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 you don't move backwards. It always moves forward. So we're going to start off with the trading plan, which I'm applying to my live trades. So we're going to be trading live. Now, if you've got questions, by all means, type them in. If you want to, me to open your mic, I can do that. Just say, please open my mic. I can do that. I always like interaction, and we can do that um, here. But it's easier for you to type it in, because then I can – there's a lot of people out there that, that, that like um, to, to just type it in and, and, and get the questions answered. So the first thing I start with is what is my purpose? Now, there's a great book that I read years ago called The Purpose Driven Life. Some of you would have read it. It was written by a, a reverend or a vicar, I don't know, in, in, in the US. But I read it when I was in, in Chicago. And it was quite interesting because you, you don't really think about what your purpose is. You just wake up each morning and go and do your job, whether it's trading, you know, dustman, garbage collector, whatever you want to call them. You, you, you just do your job. But there has to be a purpose ultimately because we're not here forever. We saw yesterday uh, the former president of the United States could not be here today, but by fate, luck, whatever you call it, he's still here. And no one knows, no one will ever know, I don't think, a bit like what happened with JFK. You'll never get to the truth of how a gunman got on a roof with all the Secret Service and snipers around. I, I, I'm an ex-policeman. I don't understand it. But when we look, when we apply that to our lives, you know, you look at that and it's it, you can't change it. And what I've learned over the many years I've been in this business is you can only affect what your thoughts are. That's that's very true. So what you think you become. And if you think you're going to be successful at trading, if you think you're going to be a successful athlete, if you think you're going to, uh, you know, like the Spanish, we're going to win the European Cup. And they kept saying it, and they did. And guess where my son is? Ryan, 14 years old. He's in Madrid. <laughs> I don't know if he went out drinking beer yesterday. I hope he didn't. But, uh, yeah, they'd all be celebrating. So the first thing I'm going to say to you is this. What's your purpose? You want to write things down. Words are very powerful. They're very powerful. When you write something down and you ingrain it in your mind, it goes into the subconscious when you go to sleep. And there's a piece of advice before I start this that I'll give you. Five minutes before you go to sleep at night, Think about all of the wonderful things that you've got. Don't think about if someone was mean to you, I lost 10 grand in the market today, I'm a loser, all of that. You do that, you're programming your subconscious mind to actually wake up with those thoughts. And you'll repeat the same thing. I know it's easy for me to say it because, but I, I've proven it to myself. When challenges come, 
often you've programmed your subconscious mind to be negative. And it happens to many people. I mean, I'm talking the majority of the people that I talk to that are not making it have programmed their subconscious mind to be negative. So you want to spend five minutes before you go to sleep and think about all the great things that you've got, whether it's a car, whether it's your house, whether it's your family, whether it's a dog, I don't care. It, it, it could be anything. But gratitude, the attitude of gratitude is a very big thing in trading. It's more important than anything, in my opinion. It doesn't make every trade a winner. You will definitely have losing trades. How you deal with a losing trade is something I'm going to talk about on Wednesday. Because negativity creeps in very slowly. You don't actually catch it. It's said that human beings have 87,000 thoughts every day. That's what they say. I don't know how, I don't know how someone's come up with that number, but I'm certain I've definitely come, come up with different, different thoughts. But the bottom line is how you deal with adversity. So I'll read this to you now. And um, if you've got any questions along the way, I'm, I'm monitoring this, but I'll just check because we've got a lot of people in here. Yeah, Paul, so um, Bob, Bob Harwood was the original programmer that started with Tom Williams. And we're talking 35 years ago. And so briefly, the, the story is that Tom went to Beverly Hills, which m many of you will know. He was a state registered nurse, an SRN, he was trained. He went to an agency in Beverly Hills, California, and said, OK, I want to go on your books. And they said, fine. He did one job. And then the second job he got was with a guy called Ike West, who was a multimillion a billionaire in those days. And he was trading the money of Kirk Douglas, some of the famous people, um, Clark Gable. I can go, go on. And they were trading big money. So we're talking size at the time. We're talking millions and millions of dollars. And Tom had to, he, he, he got um, drafted in to become the nurse, the, the registered nurse for this guy, Ike West. And I can't say this publicly. I, I can only say this privately because he was a drug addict and he had a, a problem with pills. And Tom had to look after him because he was trading and he ran this syndicate. They call it a syndicate. We call it the smart money now. And uh, he he basically looked after him and gained his trust real quick for multiple reasons, because Tom was one of those people who wouldn't take advantage of others. He'd always, there's multiple stories on this, but I won't go into it because we want to get to the charts and get to this plan. But ultimately, he said to Tom, look, Tom would go in the office with him and there, there's all these girls there and, and the guys and they're, they're, they're looking at the ticker tape ticker tape ticker tape which is what they used and the, the 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 ticker tape was what they used to read the volume basically and then they had a guy that that, that, that that unfortunately went off sick and he was the chartist he used to draw the charts with a seven foot ruler they said and, and, and ike said look if i send you to park ridge in in chicago uh, to learn the Wyckoff charting method, would you like to do that instead of be, just looking after me? Do you want to do that? And Tom said, sure. And he went off for, a, I think it was a week in Park Ridge. Um, he became a chartist, a Wyckoff chartist. And I've still got the seven foot ruler that he used. So the, the, the ladies that were on the ticker tape, as they were, would give Tom the information. He would draw it on a chart. Bar by bar, day by day, week by week, projecting the trend lines, projecting the trigger numbers, as I call them, which I invented that. But so that's and that's exactly how we met Bob Harwood, because he went back to uh, the UK with millions of pounds in the bank and thought, I bet I can computerize this. But I don't have a computer programmer. So he put an advert in the local gazette. But it was down in Torquay. And the advert was for a programmer that could program um, an idea. And lo and behold, within an hour, he got a phone call and it was Bob. And he said, well, I used to program 
all of the tank gunning systems for the British Army. So he was pretty well qualified. Tom met him. He lived in Torquay. And the and, and Trade Guider, as we now call it, it was then called GD Software, started. And here we are, years later. Bob's gone. Tom has gone. But the work continues in earnest. And that, Paul, is how it all started. It started with an idea in his head when Tom flew back. He'd got the money. And he found someone who could program it. And, and even the program at the time, but Bob said, this won't work. It cannot work on a daily chart and a one minute chart. It's, it, it just kind of cannot do it. I learned one thing in, in, in this. It's there's no such word as can't. It, 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 it just doesn't exist. We always say, oh, it can't, that can't, that can't. And, um, and of course, that, that's what you, that's what you meant, you know, you manifest it. But if you say it can, it can, which is what Tom said, he said, no, it'll definitely work. And it did. And here we are, many, many years later, proving that very point, that it can work, and it does work. Oh, there you go. Thomas has just confirmed it. Okay. Chat GPT of it. 6,000 thoughts a day. Well, I wasn't far off. <laughs> See, okay, I said eight, but I don't know how many. I thought it was eight. Now it's probably six, 6,000. Anyway, let me get to the point because I, I know we want to get to this. So the first thing is my purpose. And I say it's to empower my fellow traders and investors with the knowledge, belief, and confidence instilled in me by the master, as I called him, Tom Williams. I want all who to connect with me, which you all are, to be consistently profitable in the markets, be happy, and to help others, and know the truth about the markets and the herd, which is the group, and smart money. Very important points, this. And Tom, Tom and I wrote this together. You get paid to wait. Be patient. Believe you will receive. You won't receive wisdom, we must discover it for ourselves after a journey that no one else can take for us or spare us. That's true. I am able to succeed in anything I decide to do, this is the truth, but I must believe it. Is there such thing as failure? Yes. Is there such thing as success? Yes. Look at all the sports people in the world and they'll tell you about failure, Michael Jordan, where he, he wasn't doing well, and all of a sudden he was the superstar. David Beckham, same story. Any, any sportsman that you've ever met, and I've met several, will tell you that they've not always been successful. And so one of the lessons that I learned with trading is when you're up in front of an audience and you're taking live trades, you must prepare to fail because you won't get every trade right. I've been very fortunate, and I still am, in that I was prepared to wait in front of an audience of thousands of people in New York, which is in my book, and I won. But for an hour, it was excruciating, horrible, because I couldn't take the trade, because Tom said to me, do not take a trade unless you follow your plan. And if it doesn't follow the plan, you will lose money in front of a lot of people. And this is why it's important. The next thing is some sort of mission statement. Now, this comes more to life in general than just being a trader. Now, as I said, I've, I've taught well over a thousand people. And the one thing I asked them is, said, well, what's your, what's your mission? What's your statement? And, and a lot of them go, oh, I don't know. And that's because they haven't thought about it. If you've got 8,000 or 6,000 thoughts a day, one thought should be, what's, what's my purpose? What's my mission? And so when it comes down to trading, I, I wrote this down to start with. And again, I wrote this with Tom. And this is important because it really sets the scene for when you're stuck. We're, we're going to do a session live where we start the day trading in the US market. And we'll do it at 2.30. I'll, I'll change the time. So we start exactly when it opens. But 
we'll actually probably do it at 2 p.m. rather than 3 p.m. because we want to prepare ourselves. And preparation is key. So here I've said I'm very grateful for everything I have today and gratefully expect more to come. Gratitude. The attitude of gratitude is very key. I will share the information imparted to me by the late Tom Williams with my fellow brothers and sisters, I mean that universally, who seek me or who connect with me, which you're doing. I will make money in the markets and assist others to do the same. I will. It's not I think I will. I will excel at trading and become a hedge fund manager in two years. This was written years ago. OK, but now that's happened. I lack with integrity, honesty and fairness in all my dealings with others. I will achieve my monthly and yearly financial goals and will always control my own destiny. This is the this happens. I wrote this years ago, but I will travel the world and teach what I know to others so they too become financially independent. I can tell you that I've traveled to, well, I'll give you just some countries, Australia several times, Singapore, Hong Kong, Malaysia. I haven't yet been to China, but that's coming up. I've been invited to speak at the University of Beijing, so that's that's coming up. Um, and then India, which is the next one on my list. But then I've traveled all over Europe, all of the different um, major cities um, in Poland, um, Moscow, all of them. Now, I didn't know when I wrote that, that that would happen. So when you write something and you focus on it, it will generally appear if you make it appear. So you want to be a successful trader. Stop thinking about what your goal is and how you're going to achieve it. And this is the most important part to me. I will connect with other like minded people who have the same desire and aspirations that I've got. It's what I've done. OK, you don't always meet good people in this business. Let me let me tell you that there's a lot of con men out there. Or con women. There's people who, who will promise you the world and deliver absolutely nothing or they'll make mistakes or whatever. But what you've got to know is if you've got the information. And you've got the will and the desire. Then you will succeed. And that goes on whether you're talking about inventing a light bulb. You know, when when Edison invented the light bulb, he was saying, well, I failed 199 times. So I know what I did wrong. But the, the, the final time he said, oh, I got that one right. And there's the light bulb. We take it for granted. But failure consistently was what he had to deal with. So. The mission. Uh, to live a purposeful, meaningful, enjoyable life, enjoy all I have and graciously seek more of what I want. To love my friends and family and be a good husband, father, brother, son, boss, whatever you call that, whatever you want. But to understand that the universe we live in, it, 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 it's all energy. It's abundant. And to know that every single person on this earth is important, should be treated as such. To understand and master universal laws and always connect with a higher power, as I call it, so that you can power yourself and others to, to have a great life. And that's that's a really good statement. And this is a point and thing that Tom and I wrote. He said, well, Gavin, he said, that's that's a wonderful thing to say. And he was very, very spiritual, Tom. He wasn't religious, but he did believe in a higher power and he, he believed in Mother Nature. And we can't argue with Mother Nature. Just look at the hurricanes that are going on right now. It's a very powerful force. Work with it. It, it rewards you. Work against it. You're struggling. So. Tom and I, I said, but we watched Wall Street with Michael Douglas. And we were laughing as we were watching it. He said, well, that's true. That actually is correct. That is right. And then he said, well, bulls make money. Bears make money. Pigs get slaughtered. Money never sleeps. And then I had a, a colleague in Malaysia who told me about the Alibaba story. And he did this in a seminar. And he said, look, he said, if you're greedy, and you try to take everything at once, you'll get killed. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I'll and he, he was on, on stage. He said, have you heard of the story of Alibaba? I said, well, well yes. I said, a, a long time ago. It's not something they teach in schools, but isn't it to do with the 40 Ds? He said, exactly. I said, OK, what's your point? He said, well, he's a trader. He said, the market is like a cave. Now, Alibaba found this cave. 
and realized if he said open sesame, the cave opened. And in it was loads of gold, loads of diamonds. I mean, ah, you, you, you get so much. And Ali Baba thought to himself, he said, well, I, I'm, what do I need to do here? And, and his mind told him, he said, well, don't be greedy. Just take a couple of coins and one diamond or whatever, go back to the village, put it somewhere safe and amass your wealth lowly. And that's what he did. It, it, you know, he, he, he did exactly that every day, just a little and often, little and often, little and often, without attack, no one even spotted it. He bought a big house, no one said anything. They said, well, he's, he's building his wealth, I don't know. But then his cousin Kasim had said to him, he said, well, you've got this big house, how have you, how have you got it? He said, well, if I show you, you have to promise me that you will not be greedy. He said, of course I will, yeah, no problem. And he went up to the cave and the cave opened the other. And Ali, Ali Baba said, Bruh. and the cousin Kasim looked at him and went, oh, look at that amount of gold, look at that, those diamonds, oh my goodness. So that night, while everyone was asleep, Kasim went up in his truck and he's with his donkey and his car, whatever, not a truck, a car, um, arrived at the entrance, open sesame, of course it opens, and he starts piling all the gold onto his truck and all the diamonds, as much as he can put on it or, or his car. And then he goes back down the hill and it's bumpy and it's, so it's making a lot of noise. And there are 40 thieves in the hills and they heard all this and they went, hold on a second, that's an opportunity. And they looked at him, wow, look at that gold, look at those diamonds. They jumped out the hedges and they killed him. That's what the market will do to you. Don't be greedy. The market's devious, said Tom. And many times you'll buy on really good news, only to lose money thereafter, and sell on bad news, only to see the price rise soon afterwards. That's because smart money understand crowd behavior. And they take full advantage of this. We call it the herd mentality. Some of you will have heard of this, some of you won't, but it is group behavior. And group behavior is very common. If you're a, if you're a psychologist, which I'm not, but in, in policing, we take crowd behavior very seriously. Because if you go to a football match and you've got two groups of individuals, one supporting, let's say, Southampton, one supporting Portsmouth, they want to fight. Not all of them. But there are a group that want to fight. It goes back to tribal times. I'm going back thousands of years. As human beings, we're mammals. We, 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 we act like a herd. So if someone tells you on TV, gold's going through the roof, which was happened to, it, it happened in 2012. I'll never forget it. And I went on YouTube and said, gold's a short. It's definitely going to fall. It was at 2000 or 1900 at the time. I did the video, I got absolutely abused, trolled as they call it. But six months later, it was down at 1100. That's a fact, because I could read the chart. So as Tom Williams said, beware of the news, because it is influential. Now, I'm not gonna go through all of this because I wanna get to the charts, but the one thing you should definitely do for yourself is understand your strength and, and weakness. We call, it, we call it SWOT analysis. We do this in business all the time. And I've run many businesses. And you, you've got to look at this. And I'm going to let you read the statement there. I'm not going to just talk. I'm just going to talk through it. But you can read it. You've got strengths, weakness, and opportunity. In every every human being has exactly that. You have really good things that you're good at. You have things that you're crap at. And you have opportunities that you can take. That, that That's fact. So you, you, you need to look at yourself. And when we finish today's session, go and have a close look. I mean, look in the mirror if you want. I've heard that said. And go, right, what am I good at? What am I bad at? And what can I improve at? And you'll come up with all the answers. It, you, you will, because the way it works 
He says, you look at what your weaknesses are. Don't focus on them. Just acknowledge them, but then look at your strengths. What you, you know what you're good at. So that, think, how can I get better at that? That's what tennis players do. That's what footballers do. They know they're not perfect, but they know they can improve. And they continually refine their skills and their, and their art to get better. So that is a very important thing to do. But then look at any threats. What's going to what's going to blow your account up? Just bad trading, basically. It's not really there. And then I've got here the you know what do I want from from a personal perspective? Yep, to live a purpose driven life. I've mentioned that. Meet great people. I, I've done that. I, I've got so many great people I've met in this business. And some that are not so good, by the way, <laughs> I will say. Um, but I do have a, a lovely um, uh, wife, my law, Laura, as many of you know her, and also my kids and my eldest son, who's um, Nathan, who's 24. He's traveling the world. He's decided to resign from a very highly paid job in the city of London to go and travel the world for six months. And I put that down to the pandemic personally, but because <laughs> he was locked up. He couldn't leave home. They, they they insisted no one could go to work. And I think he now wants to go and see the world. And I think it's a great thing. And I fully support him. And again, you know, if I can have an influence on anyone's life and it improves their life, then I get it back 10 times. I don't know how it works, but it de definitely works. And I know that. I, I've had people come up to me at shows and say, you know, it's made a big difference to me just understanding the market. You've lifted the fog. That's what I hear all the time. And if that's what I've been able to do, then that's that's what life is about. You 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 improve your own life, but you improve the life of others and then then you're fine. Now, when it comes to trading, I've got all of these things here that I've said, but I want to get to the trading strategy because I realized we, you know we've got another 45 minutes here. I want to get to that because it, it, it's important. But that is something I decided that I wanted to do. Um now I'm not quite there yet, but I'm, I'm on the right path. We just got to keep going, and that's exactly all you can do. Now, Smart Center Pro, okay, that was developed by myself and Grigory Margolin, our programmer, and uh, he's our chief technology or CTO. And it's an idea that I came up with based on conversations with Tom Williams. And I sat with him and said, well, you've got all these numbers, all of these numbers, like you've got sign of strength number 36, back holding, you've got sign of weakness, five, end of a rising market. They're all, they're all the same number, well, they're all different numbers, but some of them are for it, like no demand, there's multiple numbers. He said, yes, Gavin. He said, the reason for that is the code is slightly different for each indicator. The code, the computer code. I said, well, why don't you just keep it all the same? He said, because the markets are not the same. Sign of weakness. There you go. Right. I don't, as I'm saying it, I'm getting alerts. So he said the markets, uh, and he, 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 we would sit in the garden of his um, place in Worthing, and he would try to explain to me with analogy that's he loved to do that he said well look there's the bit he had in his garden a giant oak tree he said gav he said go and take two leaves off that oak tree go and pick two leaves i said well why he said i'm going to explain something to you so i picked the two leaves sat down with him barbecue was going and I, he said right look at the leaves I said, right. He said, they look identical, right? Because they're oak leaves. I said, well, they are identical. They, they, because they've come off the same tree. He said, no. If you And we didn't have a microscope. He said, but you put them under a microscope. And you then look at the structure of the leaf. They're going to be totally different. That's a scientific fact. He said, if you look at a no demand bar that I've programmed in, on one piece of code, number 199, 198 is slightly different. But it looks the same to the human eye, but the coding's 
different. Which is why I wrote my second book, because there are certain things I realize. And I said here, the markets are fractal. And they are. They're moving. They're like a snake. Okay, It's very important to look at multiple time frames. I, I, I didn't understand that. I said, well, look, let's just look at daily charts. He said, yeah, but you'll miss the five minute move on the, on the gold. You'll miss the 10 minute move on that. Absolutely right. Now, what we must drill into ourselves before we get into this whole course is that strength appears on down moves, not up moves. It appears that the market's falling. That's where the buyers step in. Why? Because you want to buy and the professionals want to buy at lower prices. Most traders do the complete opposite. I know from doing shows, the last one I did was the London Traders Expo, and all these guys are teaching a stochastic, a moving average, and this. And they're buying the tops or they're saying it's a breakout. Let's go long. And they 90 percent of retail traders in the UK. That's what they're saying. This is in this country are losing money because they don't understand how the markets work. When weakness appears like it did in gold and it's done it again, it happens on up moves. Because sellers take advantage of the herd who are uninformed. You're not uninformed. You've put your effort and your time and your money into listening because you must think it like I know, but you must think it. Well, there must be something in this. Well, there is. Wyckoff started writing about this. I've got the magazine of Wall Street here in front of me, 1906. But why does no one really teach it? Because it appears controversial, you see. To, to most traders, they, they don't get it. They go, well, no, no, no. I was taught to look at the stochastic and the moving average. And, and then you say, well, how much money did you make last year? Well, no, I've lost about 50 grand. Well, of course you did. You're, you're not understanding the simple laws that drive all markets. There are only, well, there's four. There's the supply and demand, which we all talk about that in oil. We'll talk about oil later, but it's, it's so obvious. Supply and demand, cause and effect, effort versus result. And the final law is the law of attraction, which means I believe that's what you attract. Do you believe it? Yeah, I do. I'm going to be fine. There's many books on it. In fact, out in Australia, famous author called Rhonda Byrne wrote a, a book called The Secret. And a lot of stuff in that I didn't believe when I first read it, but everything I read afterwards and everything I've done afterwards came from that starting point. It, it works. Now, does it always work? No. But it's important to understand supply and demand, which is what we are charting. We're not doing mathematical formulas at Trade Guide. People are saying to me, oh, Gavin, so you've got some sort of hidden formula. We haven't which I find quite fascinating that people think we've got a hidden formula. We, ha we haven't. It's actually quite there. But, but the formula, if you want it, is what we call a rule set. And a rule set is simply exactly that. It's a set of rules which tells the um, software when to put up an indicator, when to say there's weakness or there's strength. That's it. And it, it follows a pattern because all of these rules come with very interesting things. Number one, it all seems to start with the high volume bar, which I'll show you. And then it completes with a low volume bar. <laughs> That's that again. I, I did a big demo to a bank last week and they were saying the same thing. They said that you, you're contradicting yourself, but I'm not. And I'll prove it. So I always say this, very important, wait for the bus to arrive. If you're waiting for a number 10 bus and a number six arrives, do not get on the bus. You're paid to be patient. That was Tom's analogy, not mine. He said, you stand outside his house with a bus stop. He said, you want to get to Brighton, which is just down the road. It's a number 10. But the six goes to Littlehampton, but it'll arrive at the same stop. 
If you get on the six, you're going to go in the wrong direction. So I always wait for the 10. The most important price bars to identify are price bars with massive volume, narrow spreads. If you see them, that's the most important one. They're very important. The spread of the bar, which is the high and low of the price bar, it's not the close, forget that. It should not be confused with a bid ask spread in any way, shape or form. It's simply the high and low of the bar. So it, what you get here is, I'll just draw it here. You've got the volume at the bottom, volume comes up, the market's going up and suddenly you get a narrow spread, close in the middle, next bar down. That is a sell. That, that is a sell. I'm not going to mince my words. And I've made more money on that setup to go short because when it goes short, panic sellers sell quickly and you can make money on the way down. The most important price bars to remove are the price bars with massive volume. As I've said, now I've said, note the spread of a bar is the high and low. Do not confuse it. If the bar closes in the middle, it's incredibly significant because the next bar, if it closes lower, shows you that supply has overcome demand. It's the complete opposite at the bottom. You get what we call bag holding. So on an up bar, as previously defined, the bar should close lower, which means they're sellers. You can, if you can be taught this and identify it, you'll become a great trader. You'll be able to look at this. And, and, and when you go and talk to your friends or fellow traders and say, well, look, see that market went up and the news was great. Everyone's happy. And I sorted it. You will be right. Very rarely, especially on the bigger time frame, by the way, because you can see these things on a five minute, three minute chart and the market will drop for maybe two or three points in the S&P. Then it will go back up again. So just be aware of that. The bigger the time frame, the bigger the move. On a down bar, as defined, the next bar should close higher. This is buying. When trading currencies, monitor both the spot and the futures, which we'll do. Now, the most important indicators before we get to the charts, because I'm conscious of time and we want to look at the charts. And I'm going to finish this in the next session because I've got there's a lot more to it. But these are my favorite setups and I've seen them today. So you've got the number 58, the trap up move. All right. And then we're looking for no demand. And we'll look at this in a minute on a, a live chart. I'm not, I don't do charts in hindsight, by the way, I, I do them live. Whether I'm right or wrong, well, I don't care because at the end of the day, I'll just close it. If I'm if I'm wrong, I'll close the trade. If I'm right, I'll let it go. Always look for trigger numbers, which I'm going to cover in detail on Thursday. That's where big money is positioning itself, and they're very obvious, as you'll see. Now I'm using Smart Center Pro, the professional version of our software, and it gives you some of these. Well, I can show you how I program it. Now I'm not going to go into the markets I specialize in because we want to go and look at the live charts. But so far, I've covered half of the trading plan. There's more to go, but I want to do it slowly and surely. Any questions so far? OK. OK, Thomas has already got a question. What's the name of that setup with narrow spread close in the middle on with ultra high volume? That, Thomas, would be on the upside. Market's moving up. It's called end of a rising market. On the downside, meaning the market's collapsing and the professionals buy it, it's called bag holding. And, and I, I've got all the, I mean, have you got a copy of my second book, Thomas? Because it's all in there. It explains it all. And if you haven't, I'll just send a copy with my compliments to you. But, but it's all in the second book. Yeah, okay, you've got it. It's all there. The, the most important thing I've learned, yeah, is if you get massive volume, narrow spread, closing in the middle, even to the upside or to the downside, something's going on. When, when I first moved to Chicago and, and was working in a trading office there, when I walked in in the morning, the first thing the guys would say to me and the girls as well, they were like, hey, Gavin, what's going on? And I'd go, I have no idea. Nothing's happened. Nothing, nothing's happened. I mean, I've just arrived. I'm just going to get a cup of coffee. So what, what's going on? was a great saying.
because I look at the markets each morning and I go to myself and I'll talk about market preparation tomorrow. What's going on? That's, that's the question. What is going on? And then you look at the volume and you go, someone's active. What's going on? What's the spread? Now you can get a wide spread and you can get narrow spreads. So let's go to my other screen. And I'm going to cover the rest of this tomorrow, by the way. So don't worry. But we're going to see here what's going on. Right, can you all see my screen? Let's just put the alerts back up because I've got Smart Center Pro going off at me here. Can, can you all see the screen? So we've got here, what's going on? Well, wow, it's a shakeout. What's going on? There's a test. What's the market doing? Going up. Ticks all my boxes. Well, I haven't done anything. Don't need to. And I'm also trading this in the future. So the Aussie dollar is doing something, but I'm not going to even go there. And we'll we'll stick we'll stick on this for a second because it's about to it's about to close. If it closes around here, it's going to break through that old top, and this will this will make a very good trade. But everything aligned, okay. Everything here, oh, those three indicators all aligned. And and this isn't, no, it's not a PowerPoint, John. <laughs> it's a, I'm not I'm not. This is go go to your chart now. This is live. That's what I said. It's live, and, and and it's all giving me alerts on various instruments. Obviously, I bought the euro. You saw that earlier, and we can see here why. Look, and what do we have? Well, I'm chatting away, talking about my trading plan. I'm looking for some strength coming in. And there is the strength and everything. The garden is green. Uh, can I ask you, is this making You're watching it live, but does this make sense? Following a trend, looking for strength on down bars. Please tell me, give me some feedback here. It, 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 does this make sense? Because that that helps me to, yeah, Paul. Absolutely. Tomorrow we'll we'll do. I, I mean, I've already I've already been long, but based on that, but it, it's it's really clear why you would go long in an uptrend with a shakeout in the background. But yeah, you, you, now again, I'll repeat this. There's no exact science to buying and selling. It doesn't exist. I can't I can't promise you that. All I can say is you put the probability in your favor and then you move your stops accordingly. But there's no exact science. I wish I could say I have proven the exact science. I don't make many losing trades because I'm a good trader. But doesn't mean I don't lose trades, but I don't let them run against me. But the entries are definitely here. And if you've got Smart Center Pro, which I think all of you have, or Smart Center, it gives you quite specific entries. It says if that, that, and that happens, and just read the trading plans. Like we've got Prism, Sharpshooter. I'm using Sharpshooter here for this particular trade because I'm following the rules. And the chart doesn't lie. Uh, Thomas, um, I don't know the answer to that. I'll have to check, but I think so. Yeah, he's asking the question. Um, is it possible to use Trade Guider in Sierra chart? Yes, with their automated trading spreadsheets. Not sure. Our, our system is very delicate, and, and I don't think you can. I mean, we are working with AI technology at the moment. That's more of a question for Sierra chart than it is for us to say, hey, look, I've bought the program. Can I do this? I think it's a question for Sierra Chart to say, can I do this? I, I don't know the answer, and I don't think even uh, our programmer would know the answer to that. Um, you'd have to ask them, because it, it'll be the pro, you'd have to put the the source code or the code 
And we, we are very protective of the code, by the way. We, do, we, we really protect it because people try to steal it. So I don't know that if we would ever be able to release that code to make that happen, Thomas, to be, to be quite frank. But, you know, you, you'd have to ask the error chart, I think. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm fine, yeah. Sorry, I'm, I've got this up because... Um, okay, so you should be able to see that now. It's the five-minute chart of the euro. I want to leave that up, though. I, so just so you know, everyone, five-minute chart, euro USD. And the reason I'm leaving it up is because I'm waiting to add to the position in futures as well, because that's also what I'm trading. It's a five-minute chart. Okay, so that's that's the setup there, the shakeout, the test, and then the rally. We'll we'll, we'll stick on this for the moment because I know a lot of you are asking uh, about this particular setup. I'm going to leave the, the alert button here. The reason I leave it open is what happens is, yeah, you're going to see every time a green indicator appears, like happened here on the 30 minute, the stopping action is, is causing the price to move, and you can see exactly what the market's doing i mean it's, it's going to go up so it's a five minute euro usd it's a spot forex contract i'm also trading on the futures as well so you, you're seeing that do i have a profit target says raymond <laughs> no <laughs> is the simple answer absolutely not no, because I, this can keep going. Tom Williams taught me that. What I am watching, however, is what this does now. This is the Smart Center Pro software. Now, if I see everything starting to turn red here, I'll close it, but it's not going to. It ain't going to happen. And how am I confident of that? Because of where we're attacking. We're attacking the supply level, but it got shaken out. That is what's driving it the shakeout. And I mentioned to you in the trading plan, that's why it's breaking out. <laughs> Rob says, why are you always so confident that you called it right? I, 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 it's nothing to do with confidence. It's knowledge. Nothing to do with confidence. Knowledge. I could be completely wrong. This com could completely reverse. I'll just close it. But it's going to break out because it's got the background. Everything's in the background. And once you do it, you've got the test after a shakeout. It's a markdown. It actually tells you. Uh, good, good question from um, Roberto. Right. Did Smart Center Pro alert you to this? Yes, it did. When the shake out happened, because I've got it programmed in. I'll show you that tomorrow, but we, we I've programmed it in to show me shakeouts. I've got three different monitors here with three different versions of Smart Center Pro looking at different things, which is which which is fine. So some of it looks for strength, some of it looks for weakness, which was in the yen. Um, we can see that the the the, the yen um, was a definite sell. Right now now we've got now we've got what I'm hoping to see happen. So we'll wait, but we're right on the top of this bar. See we've got a, a spring bar forming. We should see a markdown now into this area on low volume so that's what we'll wait for and if you've got questions by the way about any of this just 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 type them in um it, it's as i said it, it's not in hindsight we're trading live Okay, good question. Um, what is my favourite instrument to trade? That's a great question. I don't have one. <laughs> Simple as that. I trade what SCP Smart Center Pro shows me. I don't. I don't have a favourite. Uh, some people have said gold. I'm, I'm fairly well known to, to trade gold a lot, but I don't try and have a favourite. The the reason is. You can be looking at gold all day and nothing happens and you're missing a great short on the Japanese yen or a great long that we've got here on the Euro, Euro USD. 
which is telling me everything's everything's backing it up in VSA. Here's the setup. Here's your change in behavior. Look at the system. It's completely correct. It's like getting into a, an aircraft as a pilot. It's, it's all telling me I don't want to be short. I want to be long. So the next two price bars are going to be critical to this trade. If it breaks out this top, it's going to blow right over and it's going to be a very good trade because because everything's in the background. You see, that's that's what I said in the trading plan here, here, here. It's all lined up. There we go. Had to be. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wait for this bar to close and then I'm going to take my profit because we've got 20 minutes left and now the UK market's closed and so is the European market. So I don't want to give anything back. So I'm going to watch this very closely. I'm not got a profit target, but I just know I've made profit on this trade. So I'm going to see where it closes. If it closes in the middle or the low, I'm closing it. or if it closes below that but or gets anywhere near that i'm going to close it because this is going to act as resistance definitely and i've just seen something that's worrying me on the one minute chart this hidden selling here so this is probably going to come down so i'm just going to close that now okay and so we'll go straight over to the the yen and that is more interesting because what you've got here, I've already got my stop in place, so I'm not going to lose any money on this. But you've got here, sorry, I'm, it's trying to say don't move yourself. You've got the up thrust. That's why it's fallen. It's on the hourly. So what's causing that to move is that widespread down bar. So let's see if we've got any alerts on that. So I'm going to restore all of those instruments and we'll go to the sign of weakness has arrived. OK, see, everything's blood red. That's what I said earlier. Yeah, and, and actually, the good news is on the five minute chart, we had the up thrust. We've had the supply entering the market and that's why it's going down. So you've got in the background that wonderful thing called the trap, and it's completely taken everything out. OK, so I've got a question from Mark there. When you took the euro, uh, the, the, the five minute chart at least was red, not green. It was. And, and the reason, Mark, is that you've got to look at the bigger time frame. On, on the euro, the, the, the bigger time frame is still going up. You've got to understand, and this is important, that if the market falls back and it turns red, it just means the market's going down. The software detects it and says, oh, the market's pulling, pulling down. It doesn't mean you, you wouldn't consider a long trade there because you've got to look at the system and say, well, actually, the bigger time frame's going up. Is there buying? And if you look at it like, like here, all right, when it came down and it certainly began to turn red, that to me is you look at, okay, that's, that's a pullback in a, an uptrend. Okay, it's trending up. No argument with that. It's pulled back, and then all of a sudden you get this. Well, now I, I'm completely correct, I think, to uh, to have closed that trade out at the moment because that's an upthrust. They're trying to get people to go long, so profit taken. 
But when it comes to the euro, you go to the hourly chart, you go to even Smart Center Pro. Ask yourself the question. That's all you need to do. Is the weekly chart green? Yes. Is the daily chart green with any signs of strength? Yes. Okay. Is the four hour chart green with a, te a test? Yes. Yeah, everything. Yes. It was all there and it's still there. Could still go up. But I'm not going to risk it because I like to always follow the rules, which means I take profit when I can take profit. And I'm quite comfortable with what I've made today. I've got 12 trades running at the moment. They've, I've closed all the futures trades. And um, I'm doing this as, a, as part of the mentorship course. But everything here was telling me, Mark, that there's testing, right? They're, 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 they're going to mark it up and down. This is what, this is, I tell you, it, it's a snake. It's horrible because you go, when do I get in? Well, you go and look at small, smaller time frames. But does everything align? Okay. The system, forget me, forget Gavin. Let's take that out. Has everything for the most of the day been saying you should be long? I don't like green and red, but that's the way the system, that's why we have traffic lights. I don't think this is going to go much further. But that's, again, I don't, I don't put my money at risk. I try and take what I can. If this goes up much higher, I don't care because I've made money. And as Tom said to me, uh, it, it, it's written in my book, I think. He said, you don't go bust making profits. Now, this next bar is an important one because if it closes lower than that, I'd have been spot on. It, it might not. It may continue, but I don't mind. Don't be greedy. As I said, don't be greedy. You go, okay, I've taken a profit. Fine. Well, watch. There's definitely some hidden selling down here. I mean, I can see it on the one minute, but it hasn't changed the behavior on the chart. And in Smart Center Pro, it's like being a pilot in a plane. I can see everything's going up, so I do not want to be sure. I don't want to be brave and pick the top. The software will tell me if this is a top out, this all will start changing, but, but it could take an hour and you'd all fall asleep. Thomas says, uh, BU, I'm not sure, is that, is that Baidu I think you're talking about? I don't know, but an hourly sign of weakness 26. Well, again, I'll, 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 I'll say this. The same rules apply, Thomas. You will get signs of weakness. You've got to wait for what we're seeing here. A change in behavior this is going up. We get signs of weakness, art moves, and then it moves back down, but then it gets pulled back. And that's how it works. Uh, Thomas asked as well, sorry, I've just seen this. Do you close the trade when short-term diamonds change to red? I, change, I, I close a trade when I think I've made enough profit for the day. Now, you might look at this and say, well, you closed a trade here, which I did, but I didn't lose any money. And I won't, because I don't. <laughs> I try not to lose money. So if it goes against me quickly, and it hasn't done, actually, none of these trades have gone against me. I mean, the yen is the best one. This, this is, this is going to, I mean, you can't beat this. You've got this. This is a trade that's setting up for you all tonight, if you follow it, okay? Because they're testing the volume on these two bars here. It's testing. Now, if that starts to break down into that bar, that that will collapse. That I'm certain of. Right. I'm just I'm just getting um, a couple of texts in from some of my traders. Let me just have a quick look. Okay, all right. I'll go and look at that in a second. So before I move to the futures contract, which I'm going to finish on, and then I'll, I'm going to spend the last 10 minutes answering questions. Same time tomorrow, John. Yep. 
we'll, we'll, it's three o'clock UK time. Yeah. I'm just going to wait for this next bar to to close, but based on this background and what we're seeing, you've got no demand, you've got the up thrust. Um, Thomas, good question there. Uh, it, it, it is it is multi-platform, but not by default. No. For, for various reasons, but um, you don't have to. You, I think it's a very small fee um, to, to swap, swap platforms, or you know, if you contact my wife Laura, you can get a second platform for a, a heavily discounted price. Every platform's different, so you've got to understand that with uh, the software we've got, swapping platforms it takes a lot of time but it doesn't take well from, from our point of view it takes time but from your point of view no you can swap platforms at any point or you can have or buy an extra license for another platform i'm, I'm using on my other screen here sierra chart as well as uh, ninja trader and mt5 so it's perfectly possible um okay paul's asking how do we use the bottom vsa thermometer it's very straightforward what the thermometer is measuring is bullish versus bearish volume now here the price has been going down so the thermometer is measuring i think i can say it here, it's 25 price bars in any time frame so it, it's measuring a, a load of bars in the background and the price is going down so the thermometer is saying yeah but the medium term trending system is saying well no it's now going up which it has done it's actually gone sideways this is a lot more I'd say, uh, what's the right word for it? It's a lot more sensitive than the volume thermometer, which measures a lot more bars. And so I don't trade on the thermometer. It's just a good way of knowing that the market's definitely going, that's correct. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's definitely going down. Well, I can see because I'm in the trade, right? So you, you, you know it's going down, but because we've seen some support here, it's going sideways. That's the snake. That's what I keep saying. It doesn't just collapse. It will do, I'm certain at some point, but before it'll probably push up into this area. And then this will change to, to, to green again. And you'll go, oh, which one is it? Green or red? At the moment, it, it's, it's not sure. It's going sideways. It's going sideways. It's not, it's not moving in, it's not directional, even though I've already traded it because I traded it to the downside much earlier. So this this is now going to be a great lesson because that's a great question from Paul. Is you know you've got this happening, it's gone up. The tr you've got this in the medium term trend. Um, then you've got the volume thermometer saying it's going down, and actually it is going down. <laughs> no argument with that, right? And it's got weakness. But if you put everything together, you've got to look at the next part of the picture, the puzzle. All right it's gone up then it's gone straight back down because of this an up thrust and we're talking about a one hour chart here and so then you've got to look here's a test but it's not confirmed yeah no supply test which is what it is this closes lower expect lower prices down here All right, Thomas has asked a really good question. I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. So 
when you're looking at something like this, Smart Center or Smart Center Pro, your Goldilocks scenario, okay, if everyone understands that, the Goldilocks is where the porridge tastes great and everyone's happy, is when everything aligns. Okay, red, 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 if you're going to short, and the same to the opposite side. But the markets rarely do exactly that, but sometimes they do, and then it's like going to a casino and you know you're going to make money. You know because you know the odds are in your favour. But if you go to a casino, the odds are not in your favour. So you've got to look at other things. You can't put it all into one kettle, as I call it. You've got to say, well, what's the trend of price? That's the first question. Is there unusual volume in the background? Second question, is the market trending down? Yes. Now, if you see green here, the market's only gone sideways, right? The volume thermometer is quite clearly saying it's down. The medium term trending system is red. The market's going down and I'm sure. So put the odds in your favor. If it all lines up and you get that wonderful Goldilocks porridge moment, then, then then I would be very shocked if you'd lose, unless you made a very poor trade. But I took this much earlier because I could already see it. And I could see exactly what the market was doing. So I don't tend to use the volume thermometer as my main trading decisions. I use the medium term trending system, but also I look for the key volume principles in the background, and that's your one, right? And if you wanted to short this now, that's where your stop would be. It's probably gonna go, it may push up into this area, but that would be great if it did, because it's not gonna go through it. So remember, trading is about probability. You're using a system here that's very sophisticated. There are take, I've, many times in the mornings I've, I've, I've put the charts on and everything's lining up, red, 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 up thrust. I mean, that, that's my monthly salary paid. But there are other days I wake up and I look at it and everything's green, red, green, red, gray, and I go, oh, yuck, can't trade that. And I, and I don't, <laughs> so I simply set aside and go, well, I'm not, I'm not trading that. Does that make sense, Thomas? So, so basically, you're looking at trade. Yes, pay attention to this, but really look at the key principles of VSA. There's your up thrust, or your sorry, your trap up move. It's gone up, no demand, up thrust. It's in my second book. It's all there, and the market's fallen. So you, you, you basically look at the chart and you've got to put it together like a jigsaw puzzle. You, you can't just rely on and say, well, that's red, that's red, that's red. I'll short it. it. It would be so easy if it worked that way. But you can say, which I did say at the beginning, we've got a trap up move followed by no demand. Definitely here. There's an alert. Followed by the up thrust. Well, one of the things I'd say, Thomas, is um, get to grips with the key VSA principles. The up thrust after a trap up move, which is here, which took a while to come, caused a big down move. Now, because the markets are pretty much closed now in Europe, and, you know, it comes down to the trading plan. You go, well, OK, so what do I do now? I mean, I'm going to be finishing here in about four or five minutes. I'll close these trades. I'll just I'll just make two and a half thousand pounds for the debt. Well, more than that, actually, if you look at the US dollar trades. Um, that's a good living.
I'm just going to let this bar close and then I'm going to take questions. In fact, I'm going to probably go to a smaller time frame. Just get rid of that. Well, let me do that now. I mean, we've got the setups there and it's now falling again. So you've got your last sign of weakness. It's in a downturn. It's an up thrust. It tried to push higher, rejected it. And now they're testing this low. You've got a great setup here for this evening when the um, the the yen and the the, Jap the um, Japanese and the Asian markets open. Can I ask you all um, again? We had a great turnout. Lovely to see you all. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Questions? Any questions at all? And there's no such thing as a stupid question. So any any questions at all about? Um, trading plans, all of that. Um, you've all got a link to master the market, so I would, I would read that. Okay, so Mark's um, asked a good question, actually. Um, trading the pullbacks against the larger time frame seems like a strategy I want to start implementing. I hope you can discuss it. Yeah, I, 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 I think you've got to decide what, 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 Mark, we would need to do is decide on some sort of trading plan where you say, well, see, see what you're saying to me there is the market's going up, the market's going up, the market's going up, but I want to trade a pullback. And it's perfectly possible to do it. I use something called Super Scalper. And if you've got that document, you'll see exactly how it's done. We don't use a 15 minute chart. We don't use a 30 minute. We use a one, two, three, four, five minute chart. And you need to get that document, Mark. It's available to you. Just email tradeguider at outlook.com. I'll send it to you. It means you can do that. You can absolutely get into the pullback. But it's not the way I like to trade. I like to do what I'm doing here, which is making me a lot of money, which is a trade with the big trend and the small trend all in alignment. Um, okay, Tom has asked the question, what are the indications that I should redraw update the trend channel? Um, I tell you what, Thomas, I'm going to recommend to you a book and it's only $10 and it's really, really a good book about where you redraw trend lines. And it's called, and you might want to write this down, Sticky, S-T-I-K-K-Y, Stock Charts, Sticky. It's by Lawrence Holt, H-O-L-T. Absolutely brilliant book about where you draw the trend. I mean, I've got trend lines on my other computer here. Well, we'll touch on that on Thursday. So we'll do, we'll do trend. I, I don't use trend lines on this for the moment because if I'm making money without a lot of complication, which I do, I don't need to overcomplicate things. But do I use trend lines? Absolutely. We'll talk about um, Tom's book where he talks about the power of trend lines. Um, and so Mark saying, I meant using the pullback to find an entry with the larger trend. Like you did with you. Oh, yeah, we'll cover that, Mark. Absolutely. Because ultimately what happens, you're absolutely right there. You've got a big trend going up and you get a pullback. And we've seen the same thing in the yen. And, you know, where is the entry? You, I, I use um, that's the one, Thomas. Really good book, everyone. Sticky Stock Charts by Lawrence Holt is correct. That's it. Really good for if you want to learn trend lines. I think it's 10 bucks off Amazon. I mean, I've got a copy here and I can teach you some of this during the week. Well, I will do. Um, I, I think it's important to understand that trend line, if you put too much information on your charts, you can see mine's simple. Well, it, maybe to some people it's not. But to me, it is because I've been doing it for 24 years. But you look at things and you say, well, where's my entry? I don't have it. I'm going to close these trades any minute because it's half past four and I'm about to go and pick up my kids. So close that. Done. All right. So 
the bottom line is you don't you don't go bust making profit. It's as simple as that. And as long as you've got the right entry, I wouldn't focus on the exit. I can say there, I could sit here for another four hours. I might make another two grand. I might lose two grand. But you you don't want to think like that. You want to think, well, I'm very grateful for what I've received. And that's it. And then you keep doing it every day. And gradually you build up an account that you can trade with size. Whether you're trading, well, this one's a 20 grand account, whether it's a 50, 5 million, whatever. It's only a numbers game. They're only numbers. I mean, everyone gets confused. They go, well, I couldn't trade that size. Well, couldn't you can do anything. You just got to be prepared to, 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 to know that you could make a loss, which, uh, which doesn't help anyone, of course. They don't, no one wants to make a loss. Okay, so any final questions? I'm going to uh, switch off the recording. I'll put it up on, um, I'll get my business partner, Richard, to put it up so anyone can view it. So it's in your account. Uh, and just to be correct, Thomas, yeah, it's sticky, S-T-I-K-K-Y. It's an unusual spelling of it, but it is correct. It's sticky. Sticky stock charts, and it's by Lawrence Holt, H-O-L-T. Very, I highly recommend it very inexpensive and a very very good uh, way to learn trend channels you're noticing here that on these trades i'm not using trend lines but on the other screen i've got them and uh that's why why i use them i would say finally to all of you um, as we're on this journey this week wherever you are in the world we've got people from all over the place um you know I will make sure you all get a copy of this, um, the trading plan, which talks about certain setups. But let's just have a recap on today. Number one, we've covered quite a lot of information in the first session. Number two, you've seen what the markets did, right, based on the principles. You've got to believe the principles. If you don't believe them, then you're going to struggle. And I mean that in a nice way, unless you've got a system that's making you lots of money. but I've got a lot of customers, and I've taught many, who've got a system that's making them money, and they bought VSA because they want to improve, and they've done it, and it's proven. So we must be focused. Um, as a group of individuals here, we're all from different countries, all parts of the world, all different ideas. We, we must look at each part of our trading, which is what I've done today, which is part of the trading plan, which, which I think sort of sets out what the mission is. But then look at the actual charts. No PowerPoints, no looking in hindsight, no promises of riches, none of that. That's what you see. What you see is what you get. Um, you can probably hear the rain here in the New Forest hammering down in my trading office, which is a giant conservatory overlooking the New Forest National Park, and it's the best place you can ever. That's the other thing I want to talk about um, probably tomorrow is trading environment. You know, uh, really important to get the right environment, because if you act like a professional and you dress like a professional and you have a, an office that looks like a professional, you'll be prepared for the markets where you're trading up against city traders in large trading desks in their suits and ties who are up against you. And that's fine by me because I, I, I wake up each morning coming into a, an office where I don't have to spend two hours going to London to get on a tube train and rush into the office. I don't do it. My journey to work is 24 steps. Serious. That's what you want. You want to be prepared. As I've said here, always be prepared for a trading investing opportunity. They're there. They've been there for months. Many people miss the boat. They're jumping on now. And that worries me. I've got people that have, have, have not traded for years suddenly coming back and they bought my book and they want to do mentorship and all of this. And I'm like, when did you last trade? And they were like, oh, eight years ago, five years ago, whatever. They're seeing the market going up and up and up. The herd are being prepared for slaughter. Don't fall for it. I'll let you know when it's coming. I can tell you that. It won't, it'll be a clear indication on the chart. 
without doubt. All right, everyone. Well, I've thoroughly enjoyed today. That's a great start. I mean, we always want good starts, and, and that was, I'm just looking at any questions that have come in. Um, yeah, no, Paul, it's, it's all in my, it's all in the second book. Uh, Thomas, yeah, can you email um, Laura, L-A-U-R-A, at tradeguider.com with that request and we'll, we'll we'll sort that out, no charge, no problem. Yeah, so just email my wife, that's Laura, L-A-U-R-A, at tradeguider.com and we'll sort that out. Yeah, got it. Just, just email and say, you've been listening to me, can you do this? No charge, we'll, we'll do that, no problem. Um, all the SOS and, F and SOW numbers on the trading plan, they're not on the trading plan, they're in the second book, every one of them. So if you, you, you Paul, you, you should have the second book. Every single indicator number description is in that book. I couldn't put it in the trading plan simply because it's too much. So it, it's in the second book, which you can download. Yeah, and if you haven't, again, if you haven't got the second book and you want a, uh, a link to it, yeah, it's all in there, Paul. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah, it's all there because I couldn't, I couldn't put it all into a trading plan because it would make the trading plan 150 pages long. <laughs> That's not the idea. The idea of a trading plan is to keep it. Well, even my trading plan is a bit longer than I'd like, but at the same time, it's not a trading plan. It's a life plan. It's more, it's more than a trading plan. And so I'm very pleased that I. I wrote it, but the second book I wrote was for exactly the reason you just asked. How, can you show me where the indicators numbers where I can see them easily? Yeah, the complete volume spread analysis system explained. Second book. All right, everyone, I wish you good trading. So I just meant on this page, to, oh, I'm coming to, the, I'll, I'll come to this tomorrow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to that. I'll put the numbers in tomorrow. I know exactly what you're saying. But that, yeah, yeah, that's the second part. It's day two. <laughs> so remind me tomorrow. I, I, I can, well, I can tell you, actually. Bag holding is number 36. Yeah. <clears throat> 36. Climactic action, there's about five or six. Stopping volume, there's more. And test in a rising market is number 30. Now, to keep it simple, if you see number 36 followed by number 30 and everything turns green, go long. <laughs> but I'll, I'll cover it tomorrow. That's a really good point. I'll, I'll just keep it simple. I mean, in the second book, it covers all of them. But I'll show you tomorrow on a, on a stop that I'm in. Yeah. All right, everyone. I know for, in Australia, a lot of you have been up uh, very, very late. I have recorded it. Um, it will be sent to you all in your account. Um, again, great session. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I wish you good trading, constant profits. Namaste, everyone. May your God bless you. See you tomorrow. What a great group. Um, looking forward to tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.